So whoever's shouting out uh, Base64 before, um, that's what this is. Uh, it's Base64 encoded PowerShell, so there's no trick there. Uh, we just Base64 decode it. <laughs> F me, this is crazy. <laughs> this color scheme is evil. <laughs> okay, so once we Base64 decoded it, um, <laughs> Comic Sans. <laughs> yeah, this is crazy, guys. Hi folks, and welcome to Open Analysis Live, or rather a Twitch clip from our Twitch stream. We're streaming Thursdays and Sundays. Go check us out if you like this kind of stuff. And also a reminder that we have over 200 hours of live stream recordings on our Patreon, as well as in-depth reverse engineering tutorials. If you like this kind of stuff, go check it out. Now let's get back to the clip. So once we've decoded it, um, you can see here there's a bunch of uh, null bytes in the in what looks like text. So to me, that's just telling me that it's uh, it's wide chars. We need to convert to ASCII. So we can just do some encoding. Um, I actually don't use CyberChef too often, um, so I don't remember all of them, but I know that there is like an encoding, I think. Uh, encode text, yeah, there we go. Or maybe decode text. Yeah, all right, so let's decode text and let's decode it as a wide string. So let's do 16. There we go. So that seemed to work okay. Uh, how do I see the null bytes? Yeah, that's a good point. So we can turn this off. So see how there's all these dots in between each one of the characters? Now, I don't know that's a null byte. We could obviously turn this into hex and just take a quick look. So now if we turn it into hex, you can see that in between each character, there is a, uh, a null byte here. However, because I have seen a lot of PowerShell, I know that a lot of the time, uh, you know, they're using wide chars. And just from doing a ton of malware analysis, anytime I see what looks like ASCII strings with a bunch of uh, unprintable characters in between, I usually just assume it's a wide string. <laughs> uh, and in this case, if we turn on wide string decode, so UTF-16, obviously 16 is two times eight, eight bytes. Uh, what? Single single byte for um, for ASCII and uh, two bytes for uh, for wide. Okay, so uh, now that we've decoded that from base64, turned it into ASCII, uh, we can actually read the code. We can see it as PowerShell and uh, they have uh, from base64 string. So PowerShell, obviously, it's not obfuscated. They're just telling us what methods they're calling. And then it says after they have converted it from base64, they convert it into a memory stream object, which is assigned to uh, the variable s. So here is this big base64 blob. Hopefully you guys can see this. Let me scroll this up so that it's on the screen more. So uh, at the end of this base64 encoded blob, you have another bit of PowerShell here. Uh, IEX is the execute command. So this is like a reflective execution or uh, execution of, of more PowerShell. And um, it looks like they are uh, executing the, uh, the variable that they've just uh, base64 decoded, but they're also gzip stream decompressing it. So it looks like there's a little bit more to do. Um, we're going to need to not only base64 decode this, but also gzip uh, decompress this. Now, I know it's a little bit hard to see here, but what we can do is we can copy this out into a, there we go. All right, so we can just do it ourselves. It's not the end of the world. Um, yeah, so it should be a little bit easier for you guys to see this way. To me, this seems pretty straightforward, right? Because there's no obfuscation. They're just telling you that they're converting this string from base64, storing it in this dollar sign $s variable. Then they're taking that dollar sign $s variable and they are decompressing it with uh, as a gzip decompression. And then they are using the IEX command to actually execute it. So we should be able to base64 decode and then um, and then decompress it. So one thing I kind of want to do, which is maybe a little bit more fun uh, in this case than just copying this out. So what we could do is we could copy this out. Let me open another instance of CyberChef. Oh yeah, 
I love that color scheme. So we're gonna do from base 64, and then we're gonna do gzip decompress. Or g unzip. All right, so then that gives us more PowerShell. So that's another layer of PowerShell. Now we can keep doing that. It has tabs. Oh, I have tabs too, right? I got a modern browser with tabs. Um, so we could do something like that, but I want to kick it up a notch. Um, Guy Fieri style. Bang! I'm gonna kick it up a little bit. Let's kick it up a notch. And instead of using multiple tabs, uh, what I'd like to do, <laughs> what I'd like to do is I'd like to um, extract this automatically uh, out of our uh, results here. So I'm gonna use a regex to do that. You guys know how much I like regexes. And I'm gonna use a regex to extract uh, this base64 encoded string. And so that'll be the input to our next line in this script. Okay, so for our regex, we want something that's going to match a base64 encoded string. Should I, should I change the color theme back so that you guys can actually... Uh... <laughs> uh, um, but I was thinking it might be nice to do a regex so that I could save the recipe. And then if uh, we had other shellcode loaders like this, <laughs> your eyes, if we had other shellcode loaders like this, we could just use the same recipe. That was the idea behind using the regex. Um, oh, the Make up your mind, doggo. Make up your mind. He wants out, he wants in, doesn't know what he wants. All right, let's do some regex magic here. Um, do we have a, a regular expression for uh, base64? I think it's just like a to z, a to z. So it's like all the alphabet and the numbers, uh, and then maybe uh, some equal signs on the end. No, that's not right. Um, maybe some equal signs on the end, uh, which is like, you could have zero or two of them. Uh, you can have, oh yeah, you can have uh, forward slashes and pluses. You can have a plus, you can have a forward slash. Uh, what else? Can you have spaces maybe? New lines? Probably. Um, Anyway, I think that's probably it. And then we'll just say, let's grab any of those strings that are like over, uh, let's say they have to be at least like uh, 40 characters long, but they can be longer. Um, that's right, right? I'm not the best at regexes, so I don't really, uh, I'm not great at this kind of stuff. So that's actually matching our, our thingy here. Uh, the question is, how do we actually extract that? And I don't actually know how to do that in uh, list matches, maybe? Yeah. Did that work? I think that worked. <laughs> That's right, baby. Lightweight, baby. Lightweight, <laughs> baby. So uh, we now have a recipe that we can reuse that will at least extract the second stage. So at this point we have the second stage, which we know is uh, base64 encrypted. Encrypted, base64 encoded. So we have to do from base64. And we also have to gunzip it. Gunzip, baby. Hey, all right. So now we have our stage two, which has more, more base 64. <laughs> okay, so we have our stage two here and uh, let's copy that out into our editor and try and make a little bit of sense out of stage two. How many PowerShell layers are there? We're gonna find out here, a lot. So uh, it looks like There's more base64 crap in here. Uh, and it looks like they're doing a simple XOR with uh, 35. So that must be 
Base64 encoded and encrypted with a single byte XOR. And then uh, what do they do with it afterwards? Uh, they copy it into memory. And do they just execute it? Yeah, so then they just execute it. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's unzip it and take a look and see what it is. So we could probably just copy this. Can you copy? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. So we'll do another regex, but it'll be exactly the same. And it seems to be matching okay. And we will do list matches. So we've extracted. And then uh, let's add in our base64 decode from base64. And then let's add in our XOR with 35, not 32, decimal. 33, no, 35. All right, so now that we have that, um, I believe, <laughs> oh, you guys just thought about that? I'm sorry. So now that we have that all decrypted, um, it looks like it's gonna be some shell code. So we can save it out and then uh, just start taking a look at it in Ida, I guess, uh, see what it is. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Just a reminder that we are live on Thursdays and Sundays on Twitch. And if you like this kind of stuff, go check out our Patreon. We have lots more reverse engineering content, over 200 hours of live streams, as well as in-depth reverse engineering tutorials. All right, until next time, keep exposing the mechanics behind the malware. Stay curious.